Leia here from LeiaForSci.com and in this video we'll look at the ring flips or interconversion between cyclohexane chair conformations as well as the boat intermediate. In the last video we learned about the basics of the chair conformation as well as the concept of stability when it comes to axial versus equatorial substituents. If I'm given a molecule as a flat hexagon, I have an option of drawing two different chair conformations. If you're not comfortable with this drawing style, follow along with the drawing tutorial link below. But the key here is to not even pay attention to the molecule when you're drawing your chairs. We'll start by drawing two different versions of the chair and then place the methyl group in the up position. I know that it's up because methyl is on a wedge and a wedge is coming up and out of the page directly at you. But the question is, do I prefer to put it as an axial up or equatorial up? Both are technically correct. So which one am I going to see for methylcyclohexane? What's the difference between these two? In the first one, the methyl substituent is axial. The second one has the methyl equatorial and since axial is less stable than equatorial, equatorial would be the more favored structure. Does that mean that the molecule will exist as an equatorial substituent at all times? Is this the chair conformation we're going to see in nature? When would we see this kind of conformation? And the answer is that we're going to see both. The chair structure can occur one way or the other at random, and they'll actually exist in some sort of equilibrium because the chair will flip from one version to the other. Ring flips are tricky if you simply memorize what's going on. So let's switch over to the model kit and understand the nature of the interconversion. Understand what is happening with that ring flip and then I'll show you how to quickly do it on paper. Here we have cyclohexane in a random chair conformation. And as a quick reminder, the red substituents are what we see going up and the blue are what we see going down. I want you to pay special attention to how these move when we do the ring flip. In order to do a ring flip, you start at any point in the molecule. You could start with any of the carbons that are up. You could start with the carbons that are down. It doesn't matter. Pick a convention and stick with it so that it makes sense. Take one carbon, and I'll start with the one that's pointing up and flip it down. Then take the opposite carbon, so if this is carbon 1, that would be 2, 3, and 4, and flip that one up. This was initially an axial carbon that became equatorial, and this was initially an equatorial carbon that is now axial. Now this one is down, this one went up, this one went down, this one went up. Everything changed its position from this ring flip. So let's do that one more time. Now that this one is up, we're going to bend it so it goes down. Carbon on the opposite end, bend it, and it goes up. Now let's take a look at what happened. Notice that the red substituents started out up. And no matter how I flip this ring, the red substituents will always stay in the up position. Up will always stay up. Look at the blue substituents. No matter how many times I flip it, they're all in the down position. Substituents that start out going down are going to remain going down. So what is it that changes in a chair conformation ring flip? Let's take a look at another chair. And you'll remember this one from the last video because it has the green substituents are all axial and the white are all equatorial. They're outside to the equator. Watch what happens when I do a ring flip here. We'll start with this carbon that's up and drag it down. We'll start with this carbon that's down and drag it up. Look what happened. The green substituents are no longer axial. Every single one became equatorial. The white substituents that were pointing to the equator are now all axial pointing up and down. And the green ones are equatorial. So even though up stays up and down stays down, substituents that start out axial will go equatorial after a ring flip. Substituents that start out equatorial will go axial after a ring flip. Now that you get what changes and what stays the same, 
Let's take a look at the steps within that ring flip transition. The first thing we do is take a substituent that is up or down and bring it to the opposite direction. But as we bend it upward, watch what happens. This thing now is flat. It's not up, it's not down, it's not a chair anymore. This part here, this is still a chair. This part is not a chair, so we call this the half chair. It has to go through the half chair on its way up. But on its way up, it tends to bend to the side because this conformation here has substituents getting in each other's way. So it slightly bends to the side. This is called a twist boat, but then it has to untwist and get into this conformation, which kind of looks like a canoe. This is called the boat conformation. With a boat conformation, you can start twisting the other direction. So once again, we get a twist boat as this starts to straighten out into a half chair and goes down for the other chair conformation. Again, we have the chair, half chair, twist boat, boat, twist boat again, half chair, new chair conformation. Let's see what this looks like on paper. We start out with a stable chair conformation in relatively low energy. Remember, cyclohexane is most stable in a chair conformation. But in order to do a ring flip, we drag up this carbon. That means the left half of the molecule is still going to look like a chair. This gives us the half chair because the left side is flat. It's not up, it's not down. It's half a chair, half a flat, unstable thing. It's unstable because these carbons have very undesirable bond angles, and that makes the molecule unhappy. It wants to get out of that position as quickly as it can. In transitioning to a boat conformation, we have a twist boat, which is somewhat tricky to draw, but you basically do an X and then add the two terminal carbons. So these two lines, that means these four carbons, are represented here on the X, and then these two carbons would be these two. The twist boat is more stable than the boat because the two hydrogens that were facing each other on the boat conformation are not as close as the boat itself, but it's still relatively unstable. So we'll draw it lower than the half chair, but definitely higher than the chair, which is the most stable structure. In order to transition into the other version of the chair, we have to undergo the unstable boat conformation, which starts to look like a chair again, except that both sides have their substituents facing up. If we redraw it like this, you can start to envision a canoe or a boat. Why are boat conformations so much less stable than chairs? Well, look at what we have here. Most of the carbons seem pretty happy. The bond angles look pretty good. But at the very top of the boat, these two carbons here, we have hydrogen atoms that are very close to each other. These are called the flagpole hydrogens. And they're kind of getting in each other's space. When atoms get too close to each other, when they invade personal space, it's considered very, very unstable. This is why you get the twist boat, because the flagpole hydrogens want to go away from each other. It's not as visible here, but take a look from the top. They're very close to each other, very unstable. Twist the boat, and now they have some space. Twist the boat, they have some space. This is what makes them more stable, but ultimately the molecule is waiting for this. When you go into a full chair conformation, everything is relatively far away and so much more stable. Now that we have a boat, we can start transitioning into the other chair conformation. Once again, we do the twist boat. This time we do the X in the opposite direction. I know it's not fully visible here, but if you had substituents, you could start showing axial going equatorial and equatorial going axial. How do you know what to draw for the final chair? Well, watch the progress. This carbon here was dragged up so that it's in the up position. That's right here. That means we have to start dragging this carbon, this carbon, down. So we redraw the chair as we saw initially, but now the carbon on the right is in the up position. The carbon on the left that is on its way down is now planar, and this gives us another half chair, which allows us to continue dragging that carbon all the way down for that final and very stable opposite chair conformation. 
why did I draw them this way on the screen? If you had to show this as an energy diagram, you start out with a very stable chair and raise the energy all the way to the half chair. It goes down slightly for the twist boat, higher in energy for the boat, a quick down for the twist boat so it can go all the way up to the half chair, so it can go all the way down to the stable chair conformation. Let's apply this to the initial molecule that we saw. It's natural to look at the molecule, draw a chair, analyze the chair and attempt to flip it. But now that you understand what's going on, let's switch over to the model kit and apply the ring flip to our initial molecule. We were given a methyl cyclohexane, which can be drawn as a hexagon with a methyl, or written as either of two chair conformations. How do we do the ring flip? I like to put my substituents on the up corner. You can put it wherever you want. Remember, this is a ring, so you can go round and round and round, put it wherever you want as long as you stay consistent. We have the methyl group here in the chair conformation with the up position. So we simply take that methyl, drag it down, take the other end of the chair, and drag it up. All the intermediates were there, so we went from chair, half chair, twist boat, boat, twist boat again, other half chair, and chair. But in short, like that, one up, one down. Try this, it's fun. Once you understand what is going to happen, in other words, the methyl group starts out in the up position. The methyl group ends up in the up position. The only thing that changed is having it axial versus equatorial. Once you get that, you don't have to worry about it when you're drawing, making the entire ring flip process so much easier. How so? If we're trying to figure out what to draw, we don't even need our initial molecule to figure out what both chair conformations will look like. What you do instead is just draw two chair conformation skeletons so that the parallel lines are opposite in nature. For the first structure, I have left over right. For the second structure, I'll have right over left. Again, this is taught in the drawing chairs tutorial link below. Here's the best part. Take your cyclohexane, and number it so that you know where the substituents are located. We only have a methyl, so it's pretty easy. Put a number one. Anywhere on this chair conformation, put a number one. So we'll put the one here. Now ask yourself, in order to do a ring flip, what happened? Well, I chose to take that carbon number one and drag it down, or you can start by taking carbon number four and dragging it up. It doesn't matter as long as you're consistent. If carbon one came down, this is that same carbon number one. Now that I know what's what, I simply ask myself, what substituent is where? Carbon number one has a methyl in the up position. Up position on this structure has to be axial. Up position on this structure has to be equatorial because the other substituent is down, in this case equatorial. Here it's axial. If we had a second substituent, you would do the same thing. For example, if we have another methyl here, also in the up position. I would continue numbering two and three clockwise. This is important. I don't care where you start. I don't care where you continue. But if your hexagon is clockwise, your chairs have to be clockwise. If the hexagon is counter, the chairs have to be counter. We're going clockwise, so we'll go two, three. So we'll draw two, three, and stop. We don't need to number all the way through six. One, two, three in the clockwise direction. Where is methyl on carbon three? The up position, once again we have a wedge, is axial on the left structure and equatorial on the right structure. And since we have a gray line, let's put a hydrogen so you don't get confused with the methyl groups. And there we have it, a quick and simple ring flip that starts out by simply drawing both chairs, figuring out where your substituents are located and drawing them onto the molecule. Once again, let's figure out which one is more stable. On the left, we have two substituents that are axial. On the right, we have two substituents that are equatorial. And since we know the axial substituents will have unfavorable diaxial interactions, we know the left structure is less stable and the right structure is more stable. One last thing I want to share with chair conformations. Structures will typically exist in equilibrium with each other. If we go back to the previous example, when there's one methyl group, the equilibrium will tend to favor equatorial slightly more than axial. When there are two methyl groups, 
equilibrium will favor this one much more because the more the difference between stability, the more time the molecule will spend in the more stable position. Two equatorial is so much more stable, so the molecule will tend to favor this structure, but it'll still go back and forth. You'll still see that ring flip happening again and again. But if you have a molecule that has a tert-butyl substituent, which is a very, very big bulky group, that's a CCH3-3, it's like carrying a giant umbrella. This molecule is going to spend 99% of its time where the tert-butyl group is in the equatorial substituent. You can think of this as a tert butyl group locks the ring equatorial, and that means anything else you have is going to remain locked in that position. Keep this in mind when you get to reactions, especially, especially when you're doing E2 reactions on cyclohexane. Ready to try some practice problems? You can find the entire chair confirmations tutorial series along with a practice quiz on my website, leahforsci.com chairs.